In the last lecture, we looked at common methods of comparing outcomes between two groups. However, outcomes data alone cannot tell us if the difference between the groups is significant, and the outcomes alone cannot tell us if a causal relationship exists between the exposure and the outcome. To determine causality, we need to look deeper into the design of the study and ensure it was conducted appropriately. If a study is not conducted appropriately, then we cannot apply its results to clinical practice. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe the criteria to establish causality in observational and interventional study designs, differentiate between the major types of study designs used in drug literature, and evaluate the most appropriate study design based on the clinical scenario. A causal relationship is a relationship between two variables in which change in one variable results in the change of a second variable. In causal relationships, there are two types of variables, independent and dependent variables. The dependent variable is the variable that is changed by the independent variable and is usually the variable that is measured as an outcome. The independent variable is the variable that is manipulated and causes a change in the dependent variable. So if you're assessing the impact of a blood pressure pill, you'd give one group low dose of the pill and one group high dose of the pill and assess blood pressure changes. In this case, the blood pressure pill is the independent variable and blood pressure is the dependent variable. There's a simple mnemonic to keep independent and dependent variables straight. It's called dry mix. Dependent variable equals the responder variable equals measured on the y-axis. And for mix, it's manipulated variable means the independent variable and it's measured on the x-axis. So how can we establish if we have a causal relationship? For example, how do we know whether cigarette smoking truly causes COPD or whether high blood pressure causes strokes and heart attacks? We saw last week that there are many variables that can be positively correlated, but that doesn't mean that they represent a causal relationship. The truth is, it's very difficult to establish causality. But there are a list of criteria that can help us establish whether or not a relationship is causal. Here, these are the Bradford Hill criteria. So, the cause must precede the outcome. There must be a strong relationship between the variables. There must be a dose response, so more exposure leads to more outcome. The relationship is consistent in different studies and populations. There's a single cause for a single effect. There's a biological rationale for the relationship. The relationship is consistent with previous knowledge. The relationship is synonymous with other similar relationships. And randomly assigned treatment changes the clinical outcome. Change in cause equals a change in effect. However, the Bradford Hill criteria should be viewed as guidelines, not as absolute requirements. For example, let's think about the causal criteria regarding smoking and lung cancer. This relationship, although it is causal, does not satisfy all the criteria. We know that we cannot ethically perform an experiment in which we randomize people to smoke a pack of cigarettes per day or to abstain from smoking. So we cannot satisfy that criteria. In addition, the relationship between smoking and lung cancer is not specific. Cigarette smoking causes many types of cancers and adverse effects and lung cancer can occur in the absence of cigarette smoking. This does not mean that smoking does not independently increase the odds of developing lung cancer. Other criteria have issues as well. For example, coherence, plausibility, and analogy may be limited by current knowledge of the relationship in question. Maybe at the time that the cigarette lung cancer debate was being waged, there wasn't laboratory evidence to suggest dysplasia of bronchial cells induced by cigarette smoking. Because the Bradford Hill list is complicated and doesn't represent requirements, we will use a modified version of this list. When looking through study designs, we should assess whether our studies are fulfilling the following three criteria. Experimentation, which is by far the strongest criterion because it shows that as we modify the independent variable, the dependent variable changes accordingly. We will look at temporality, making sure that the cause happens before the outcome or effect. And finally, we will look for individual association. 
In other words, we want to make sure that the association between the exposure and the outcome is established in individual patients instead of looking at outcomes at the state or country level, and that the association is significant. In other words, is the relative risk clinically and statistically significant? Different types of study designs will fulfill these criteria to different degrees. In the next video, we will look at different components of studies, and in the third video, we will discuss the individual study designs in further detail with examples.